time. So please feel free as others are joining us to go grab a cup of coffee, a, a tea, a juice, whatever you drink in the morning, and come join us and we'll be starting in, in a very few moments. See if some folks are gathering in, it's just about time. Grab something to drink and come and sit at your kitchen table with me. So like I said, grab a cup of coffee. It's good to see folks coming in. It's uh, so nice to have people joining us and feeling uh, church from my place to your place, a new way of church uh, and being church together. So like I said, go grab a cup of coffee, a tea, a juice, whatever it is, and join me in starting our Sunday with that cup of coffee or tea or juice and a prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we are worshiping you from home today, but we know that you are with us and you hear our prayers. We praise you for taking care of us, for protecting us, and for being with us in this pandemic. We know that it is you who has been with us through these trying times. We are so thankful. Be with our families and our friends this week and bless them in a way they've never known before. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So welcome everyone. I'm Reverend Karen Lumley from St. Andrews River Heights United Church coming to you from my place to your place as we be the church together. Now there are a few announcements I want to draw your attention to for those of you who get our e-blast and if you don't just contact the church and do that. Um, next week we will be celebrating our fifth anniversary of becoming an affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. We will also be celebrating creation and Rita Swan who's a student of the lay worship um, leader ministry program of the United Church of Canada will be joining us and has prepared some liturgy for that special affirming and creation aspects and parts of our worship. So come and celebrate and I will bring a message and we will be together. Come and celebrate, all are welcome. As we center, we realize that all the doubts in the world cannot wash away our inheritance from God, our inheritance of love, of refuge and of courage. Our call to worship, there is a response, so feel free to say that out loud to yourself at home, or you can just whisper it in your own heart. The response is, in God we have an inheritance. In God we have an inheritance. Come into God's presence with joy, a response. In God we have an inheritance. Come into God's presence with hope. Response, in God we have an inheritance. Come into God's presence with longing. Response, in God we have an inheritance. Come into God's presence with love. In God we have an inheritance. That inheritance brings new life. And as we light our candles, we are here today celebrating our Easter faith, knowing that God has raised Jesus from death to life, and that God's promise to us is that he is resurrected. And as we light the Christ candle, we are reminded that Christ is the light in our world. And we are reminded that we are the light of the world that we are the hands and the feet of Christ. Let us pray. God of signs and wonders, breathe new life into us this day, that our spirits may awaken to the joy and the hope of the glorious inheritance through the living Christ. Clear our vision, Holy One, that we may see the promise of Easter in the stirrings of this precious earth and in the life energy flowing through our own bodies. Help us find the faith to believe where we have not seen that others may see. In our living and our loving, 
May the glory of the risen Christ grant us peace. Amen. Now, in my children's time, I have several different coins. And as you can see, there's a loony, there's a toony, there's a quarter, a nickel, and a dime. Now, if you're at home, grab some coins and take a look at them. Now, if you look at the, the loony, of course, there's a loon on it. And on the other side is Queen Elizabeth. Now, if you pick up a toony, you look, Queen Elizabeth is there again, and there's a polar bear. If you pick up the quarter, there's a caribou on the front, and on the back is again the head of Elizabeth. And the dime, there is a sailboat, and on the other side is again Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth is on the nickel, and a beaver is on the front. Now in all these coins, there's two sides to each coin. Is one side what makes it the loony or the toony or the quarter? No, both sides. It's the coin. It's like faith and doubt. We need both to believe. Now faith is sort of, when I start up uh, this program and live, that it's actually going to work. I have faith that it's going to work. Sometimes, I must say, I do doubt it. But... I can have faith. When I sit on the chair, we all have hope and faith that that chair is going to hold us up. We believe that. There's no doubt in our minds. When you go and flick on the lights in your home, you believe that you're going to have electricity and power. We have faith. We believe. And when we doubt, we have questions, and we may have many doubts today, especially as we think about COVID-19 and all the questions and the wonderings that we have and the doubts that life will ever be the same because perhaps life will always be very different because of this. We have doubts, but doubt and belief equal faith. And we're gonna talk more about that when we meet Thomas today. And our scripture reading today is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. It's the story of Thomas when Thomas meets Jesus. John 20, verse 19. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, the doors were locked for fear of the leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be unto you. Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw their Lord. And again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and, gave a, and took away their sins and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If anyone forgives your sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive, they are not forgiven. And then Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, known also as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples the first time Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks in his hands and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them this time. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here in my hand. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting, Thomas, and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told them, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believed. Jesus performed many signs and miracles in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Now, in our sermon today, I, I want to introduce 
Thomas to you. And Thomas wants to share his side of the story because scripture doesn't always give us all of the details. And so Thomas feels he's been misjudged. And Thomas feels that he wants to share his side of the story with you. So I'm going to ask that you think about Thomas and the story and what you know about him for a moment as I go and pick up Thomas to bring him, to introduce him to you. Now, Thomas, he came in, in uh, the local travel of his day, which was camels, so he is here and maybe a little weary and dusty and just kind of had to rest a moment and clean off his feet and sandals as he got prepared to come and visit with us. Now, Thomas says to us, Thomas, I am Thomas. And you know, people call me Doubting Thomas. I gotta tell you, I don't really like that name. They say I'm a skeptic. And really, what's wrong with asking questions? Is it really that wrong to ask questions? I've been chastised by people throughout all of my life and through scripture and through many of you, I'm sure, because of my doubts, my questions. And even my friends who I traveled with for three years, 24 seven, we knew the good, the bad and the indifferent about each other. They were in that room and they judged me because I wasn't there. And secondly, because I had questions and I had doubts. Now everyone was there in that room the first time, except Judas, of course, and, and that's another whole story. And you know, I still feel, like I told you, I get a bad rap. And so I'm going to tell you the real story. I'm not big on imagination. I call a spade a spade, not a shovel. And you know, Jesus and I were, you might not know, we're really close. I didn't ask to sit on his right side or his left side, like you know who, the two brothers. I didn't wash Jesus' feet with oil or my hair. I was not the one who denied him three times. I am the one who simply asks questions. Truly, what is wrong with that? Questions are not bad, are they? Some of Jesus' followers thought so, and many people today think so. But you know, I got judged for not being there that, that day when they were all in that room. They were all huddled, hiding in that, that room because that's where it all began. And they were hiding because they were afraid of, of what was happening because so much was going on. And you know, I had errands to run, I had things to do. And this was before COVID-19, so there was no social distancing guidelines. There was no travel restrictions. And there certainly was a stay, wasn't a stay at home. So I was out and about doing what needed to get done. <clears throat> I was a realist. I didn't believe in fairy tales. You can ask my, my mother, even as a young lad, I always called it as it was. No sugarcoating stuff, no fairy tales. But you know, I didn't understand why people were upset with my questions. And you know, Jesus was saying all sorts of strange things. Like he was talking about dying, he was talking about going away, he was talking about coming back. And, and, and we had traveled with him for three years. Where was he going? We'd been everywhere that there was to go. I wish I'd asked him more questions. Jesus said that we would know where he was going. That's pretty bizarre in my opinion, because how would we know where he was going? Unless, of course, he told us. It's that famous passage that I'm sure many of you love in John 14, where Jesus said, Thomas, you know where I'm going. I had no clue, but I didn't want to really look like I was stupid or something, so I didn't say anything. It's a familiar passage, a comforting passage. And you know, and then you know what happened Easter week, Holy Week, and then Easter, 
Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Jesus was crucified and buried. What a whirlwind. We were in chaos. We didn't know what was going on. Everything we believed, we doubted. Or at least I did. I can't talk for the rest of them. You know, but when Jesus came to see the disciples in that room, I wasn't there. And I ran as fast as I can when I heard via the grapevine that he was there. But you know, I was really disappointed when he wasn't there. And of course, all the rest of them bragged about seeing Jesus and talking with him. I was a little miffed. Jesus didn't come when I was there, too. So I said some things I, I wished I really hadn't said. I said I wouldn't believe unless I put my fingers in his hands and in his side where the sword pierced him. I was grieving. My, my, my friend, my good friend, was gone, was lost. I know where he was. And then we were all in the room together again. And Jesus came. Jesus encountered me and showed me his hands, let me put my hand and asked me to put my hand in his side where he was pierced. And he said, blessed are those who have not seen and, and yet believe. And most of us think that was a, a, a chastisement to, to me because of my disbelief, but really I was so awed, so amazed at the encounter I with Jesus. He encountered my questions. He understood my doubts. For me, it was a moment of wow. It wasn't a reprimand. I didn't take it as that. I took it not as harsh words that Jesus spoke, but that I was having an encounter with Jesus where I was. It was something that was amazing. It was something that was okay for me to wrestle with my questions and my doubts. Jesus had whispered to me, it's good to question, Thomas. It's good to doubt. Because doubt leads to faith. Just like the two coins of the story that I'm told was told. Faith and questions and doubts and belief. Two sides to a coin. You need the doubt. You need the questions. You need the faith. That's why I think I get a bad rap. That's why I think you needed to hear my side of the story. So your question is, was I stubborn? Was I determined? Is it how you see and see things differently? Is seeing believing? Is doubting believing? It's good to be a questioner. It's good to ask. Now I need to go because my camel is ready and I must make that long journey back home. But it was good to be with you and I will see you next time. And so your minister Karen will come back and share with you some of her insights into faith, to doubt, to questions, to believing. And so we thank Thomas for his presence with us. And as we think about it, we can make room in our lives for doubt, for questions, so that our faith can grow. Jesus did not turn Thomas away because of his, of his doubts, but he engaged Thomas in that doubting. Making room for doubts is important. Thomas was grieving, and yet Jesus moved towards him in his grief and in his loss and engaged him where he was in his doubts, in the questions. In these days of COVID-19, we have many doubts. We have many questions. And it is at this Easter time that the risen Christ comes to us through the resurrection to assure us that we are okay, that Jesus is present with us in this journey. So when we experience both doubt and faith, we truly are better for it. Poor Thomas. He's in the lect lectionary every year, so we hear about Thomas. He's preached about, and often the story we remember is his doubts. But you know, wisdom comes from doubts. Real faith comes from doubts. Because it is in, in doubting that Thomas and we can encounter the risen Christ. Healthy skepticism 
is good. In a book I've read lately, is called. it's by John Irving, and it's a prayer for Owen Meany. And the minister, Mr. Merrill, the minister, says, It's most appealing and rest assured, because doubt is the essence of faith, not the opposite. Doubt is the essence of faith, not the opposite. And so the story of Thomas reassures us that doubt has values and challenges us, to have a deeper, more meaningful faith, that we can find faith even in our doubts, even in our questions. In these days of doubt and fear and COVID-19, rest assured we are not alone, for the risen Christ journeys with us, walks with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you are with us in the questions in the doubts, in the fears. We thank you that in our doubts and fears we can find belief and that you encounter us and journey with us. Comfort us in our faith journey. Open our hearts and our minds to faith, to doubts, to questions. Give us the wisdom to believe what we have seen and not seen. Help us to follow you with open-eyed faith and questions. In our own faith community, we pray for those who are in the hospital or who are just out waiting from hip surgery. Be with her. We pray for Jean Cannon's family, her son William, who grieved the passing of their mother. And for Lou Rutledge, who's moved into Tuxedo Villa. Be with her as she's there in a new environment. We pray for those suffering from COVID-19, for the anxiety, the illness, the fear, <clears throat> we pray for the essential workers, for the doctors and the nurses, the hospital staff, the nursing home staff. Be with those in assisted living residents, nursing homes and hospitals. Be with the children at home learning. It's a difficult time for them, for their fears and concerns and questions. For parents who never wanted to be teachers or teachers, Give them strength and courage and help them. For those who may be struggling with addictions and abuse and loneliness and aloneness, be with them. And for those who worry that the world will be so different when all of this is over, give them comfort and strength. We pray that you would help us in these days of social distancing, in these days of limited travel, of being absent from the social activities in church that are so much a part of our lives and our family and our friends. Be with us in these days and teach us to pray as Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus takes seriously our questions. Jesus walks alongside of us in our journey of life. Jesus surprises us and blesses us, filling us with wonder and awe and even wow. Jesus calls us together to be comforted in the resurrection hope. Rejoice for life is stronger than death. Rejoice for love is stronger than hate. Joy is stronger than sorrow. And the promises of God are sure. Go with the peace of Christ. Go with the love of God. Go with the resurrected Christ journeying with you. Amen. God bless. Take care. Be safe.